Something Blue. Willow's moping goes into overdrive, which was exactly the shocking twist that this show needed. We open with that sad piano music. Nothing has even happened yet, but it's right there. <laughs> so, great start. We see Willow sitting in her room, depressed about Oz leaving. And that only lasts about 10 seconds, because then we just cut to the school, where Buffy sees Riley putting up a giant lesbian alliance banner. He talks to her about going on a picnic, and he tells her he likes her because she's mysterious. Which, for me, is a red flag, but okay. <laughs> Later, Buffy's telling Willow about the conversation and that she really likes Riley. But because this is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, she says something is wrong, but she doesn't know what. So, really what she's saying is the fact that nothing is wrong is what's wrong. There isn't any drama she can feed off of. <laughs> Riley seems so solid. Like, he wouldn't cause me heartache. Man, what an annoying character. Yeah, leave it to Buffy to make up problems for herself. And she mentions that she saw Angel in L.A., which must have happened in an Angel episode. Nice try, Buffy. I'm not watching that show. <laughs> Buffy has finally decided to interrogate Spike about the army guys. So I guess a full episode after he freely offered the information is better than nothing. They do this while he's chained in Giles' bathtub, but he doesn't give any useful info. And Buffy is enjoying Spike's inability to attack people. Again, relating it to performance issues, which is a joke that has gone on for three episodes now. I think it's time to let it rest. Although I actually thought it was funnier here than the other episodes. So maybe it just gets a little bit better every episode. By the end of the season, those jokes will be gold. <laughs> <laughs> and Giles says they have to hold him until they can figure out what was done to him so they can know for sure that he is harmless. And I still don't understand why they don't just outright kill him. Willow suggests trying a truth spell. Spike mentions how she is emotionally distraught and hanging on by a thread because of Oz's absence, which the others are completely oblivious to. Later, a crying Willow tells Buffy that Oz had all his stuff sent to wherever he is, which means he's not coming back. While Spike yells at Giles about not being able to watch his soap operas, Giles tries to call Willow about performing the spell, but she doesn't pick up. At Buffy and Riley's picnic date, which is right in the middle of campus for some reason, I mean, there are people walking on the sidewalk two feet away from them, Riley is gushing about how he loves to drive and it went on for a really long time and was really weird you just relax let it wash over you the air motion let it roll it turns into a metaphorical conversation about moving their relationship forward which buffy seems totally into apparently not having learned from her experience with parker or remembered her conversation earlier in this episode where she said she needs drama and fighting and whatever then Willow shows up to make things awkward with her crippling depression. And that's the scene. <laughs> I thought this episode had way too many scenes that weren't sure how to resolve, so they just cut them off. I think they did that on purpose with this one. But they did it three other times in this episode that I marked. Yeah, yeah. Buffy's relaying Willow's sorrow to Xander and Anya at the bronze, but it appears that Willow has rebounded and is dancing to a song that I've actually heard before. But I suspect if you put it in a clip, we'll get busted for copyright, so don't do that. It was Blink-182 who just announced a world tour, if you didn't know. Oh, jeez. Okay, I didn't know who it was, but I knew it was something I didn't like, so now I know to avoid them. <laughs> yeah, go get those tickets. Willow tells them she's decided to look at things more optimistically, and it turns out she has turned to alcoholism to solve her problems. Buffy drops some hypocritical advice on her. And she references Beer Bad in another desperate attempt at some of that money we talked about in that episode, but it still doesn't work. And the conversation isn't actually resolved. It just cuts to both of them later that night in bed. It was very jarring. And while Buffy is asleep, Willow performs a spell that is supposed to make whatever she wills come true. And I thought it was ridiculous that at night in a college dorm, there's nobody around, especially in a communal bathroom. How long did it take her to set all that shit up? <laughs> and after she was done, did she clean up or did she just leave all those candles in a circle all over the floor? It would have been more realistic if during the spell she kept getting interrupted by someone in a stall vomiting because they had drank too much. Fucking <laughs> well, ye elements, I summon thee now. Control the outside, control the 
but the next day it appears that it didn't work. Giles shows up to check on Willow about skipping out on the truth spell. And him chastising her for not meeting her obligations was weird because I can't remember the last time he said anything like that to Buffy. So I guess he's just given up on her because he used to do it all the time. She tells him about the spell that she tried to cast and he says she shouldn't do that while in her state, which offends her. And she tears him a new one saying no one knows how she feels and just want her to get over her moping over Oz and says that Giles can't see anything. And then her eyes go all magic-y, and it appears to impair Giles' eyesight. But of course, he just walks out. Yeah, completely ignoring the conversation that they were in the middle of. <laughs> he goes to perform the truth spell on Spike by himself for some reason, but he has trouble seeing the words in the book. As he's cleaning his glasses, he drops the key for the chains binding Spike, who promptly snatches it, shoves Giles, and runs out. Willow complains to Buffy about Giles. And she says she isn't a good witch because her spell didn't work. She says that Amy was a way better witch than her. Amy, the character who I never thought would show up again, has, I guess, been with Willow the whole time? What a weird callback. <laughs> While they're talking, Willow accidentally turns Amy into a human again, but then back into a rat, and they don't notice. So she got paid for that appearance, yeah? Yeah, I thought about that. They called her in just to be in there for, like, one shot and just be like, here, take off your clothes and get on this bench. <laughs> And it was a goofy moment, but apparently neither Buffy nor Willow noticed the giant whooshing sound effect or the bright flash of orange light twice. I felt like I was watching a Mr. Bean sketch. Giles calls to tell Buffy about Spike escaping, and Willow is upset that Buffy's leaving to go capture him instead of spending more time with her. Buffy says she can't shirk her responsibilities just because Willow is sad. She's only allowed to shirk her responsibilities when she herself is sad. <laughs> Willow says that Buffy will probably find Spike right away, and she does, which they are both confused by. Spike tells Buffy that that's the spot where he escaped from the lab, but he fails to find the door. So she takes him back to Giles. Who is still dealing with his eyes. And Spike talks about getting his spell reversed, which I think was the writers getting mixed up between his chip and Willow's spell. Is that really surprising, though? No. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, Willow is complaining to Xander about Buffy abandoning her, and when Xander says Spike is the more important thing right now, Willow asks, why don't they just get married then? And then Giles walks in to find Spike proposing to Buffy. Xander tells Willow that she'll find someone else, but she insults him by listing off all the supernatural girls he's been involved with, and tells him, you're a demon magnet. My next note is just, whoosh. <laughs> you're a demon magnet. Hey, I was just trying to help. Giles tries to call Willow and leaves a message saying there must be some kind of spell going on while Buffy and Spike discuss their marriage ceremony. Giles finally goes completely blind and Spike decides to help reverse the spell since now they're practically family. And Buffy says Spike will take care of Giles while she goes to get supplies. When she goes out, she immediately gets distracted by a wedding dress and a window display, which could have been the spell or could have just been Buffy. She runs into Riley and tells him she's getting married and he's very confused. And I liked how he pointed out that Spike... That's a name. But he's talking to someone named Buffy. He is very confused and ends up leaving, and dumb, goofy music tells us to laugh. But I didn't, just to be clear. <laughs> I really wish they would let the humor speak for itself instead of trying to shove it in her face. I agree. Don't patronize me. Show. Why are you laughing? I didn't tell you to laugh there. <laughs> Anya is trying to get intimate with Xander, but they are interrupted by Rawhead Rex. They manage to kill him, but then another demon busts in, so they run out and make their way to Giles' house, where they are freaked out by everything going on. Buffy is also back hanging out with Spike after having told Giles that the magic shop was out of what they needed for the reversal spell, and they presumably left Xander's mother behind to die. Oh yeah, I didn't even think about that. Neither did the writers. When Xander learns what's going on with the rest of them, he remembers what Willow said earlier, and Giles mentions Willow's will spell. And I thought the end of the scene was pretty funny. We gotta find her. Before somebody gets really hurt. And we cut to Willow walking into her dorm room and being ambushed by a demon. The same one that was talking to Anya back in Doppelgang Land. The rest of the gang reaches the dorm room and Anya immediately realizes that the demon, Tahafrin, has taken Willow. And he is the one who originally made her a vengeance demon. We see Tahafrin telling Willow that her emotional pain got the attention of some demons. I'm going to say that again. Her moping was so intense that it attracted a bunch of <laughs> demons. Even Buffy never managed to do that. And what about people who have actual problems in the world? 
you know? <laughs> Buffy and the others end up in the graveyard, where Anya tells them about how Dehofren found her after she had been dumped, and that's when he offered to make her a demon. And then a bunch of demons pop out and chase them into a mausoleum. Dehofren offers to make Willow a vengeance demon, while showing her a really crappy like 240p image of the rest of the gang being assaulted so i guess they don't have 4k in hell or whatever even 720 would have been fine willow tells him that she doesn't want to be a demon and just wants to go help her friends and a hoffer responds with i'm sorry to hear that oh well it was kind of obvious that that was the joke they were going for but i still thought it was pretty funny and he gives willow his talisman saying if she changes her mind she can use it to contact him and he sends her to the location of the others, where Buffy is really focused on making out with Spike for some reason while Xander is about to get killed. Willow reverses a spell, which causes Buffy and Spike to be repulsed by each other. Giles to see, but Xander is still a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Later, Willow is trying to alleviate her guilt by baking cookies, and Buffy is still disgusted that she was going to marry Spike. I noted that Spike was tied to a chair, but his hands were free. These characters have really learned a lot. And before, they needed those intense chains, but now it's just rope. Even though he can't attack people, he's still very strong, right? Yeah, I mean, I would think he could just break the chair. Yeah. Buffy talks to Willow about how weird it was being in love with Spike, and says she has decided she really does want a normal relationship. At least until the next episode. She remembers her encounter with Riley, so runs to tell him that she was just joking about everything before. And we get their acoustic guitar relationship music. He says she must be insane, which should be a red flag, again. But for some reason, Riley doesn't see it. I'm glad he's in charge of all those army guys and everything. <laughs> Something blue. Overall? The humor in this episode worked for me pretty much the whole time. And that's two episodes in a row. So I wonder, do the writers finally have a handle on it? Because that would be great. While Willow was very apologetic at the end, it didn't seem like she actually learned anything about her pretty crappy magic skills. And the whole catalyst of this episode, her being mopey over Oz, was eventually completely discarded. There wasn't any resolution at the end, even partial, about why she cast that spell in the first place. So I can only assume she's going to continue to mope in further episodes, having not really learned anything. I thought the gang was going to find out more about the army guys and that whole underground installation. But again, we went through an entire episode where they learned nothing new. I guess a two episode gap is what we need. Tell, let's just draw it out to the end of the season. Riley's weird extended scene about how he loves driving so much was very awkward. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if there's an episode in the future where there's a sentient female car and he has to decide whether to date it or Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of foreshadowing method this show seems to employ. Yeah, I car, you Tarzan, or whatever. Christine, uh... <laughs> because Christine's already not a female name. <laughs> <laughs> they would get busted. They can't just borrow the name like that. Maybe Christine with a K. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed a little contrived that Xander was the one who figured out what was going on so late into the episode. I would have thought that Giles, who heard, You don't see anything and then immediately had trouble seeing, would have said in that moment, oh shit, I can't see anything, but instead just walked out. It would have made much more sense if his ailment had resulted like the others, where Willow said Giles can't see anything to someone else, and it affected him where he was. Why they chose to not do that just with him, I don't know. I guess Xanders was in front of him, but, but yeah. Yeah, that's true. Ah, uh, <laughs> Well, he's dumb by default, though. So it's more believable. That's also true. And it didn't happen immediately. It's not like demons started busting through the windows right then and there. The show has not shoved the Riley-Buffy relationship down our throat yet, but I'm waiting. It's coming. I can feel it. Just this sense of dread. <laughs> Even in real life, I just fear to hear crappy 90s acoustic guitar music just coming out of nowhere. <laughs> this episode was entertaining, if not the most intelligent. And nothing happened to forward the plot of this season, even though they had opportunities. So that's kind of a bummer. But I'm gonna give this one a B minus. I also gave it a B minus. This was another large scale magical event episode. And those are typically more enjoyable than most, I think. Like Band Candy and Halloween, this was an excuse to play around with the characters and have them kind of act differently. And I found that entertaining. 
I agree that the humor was better than usual, although it is sometimes still kind of misplaced, with characters ignoring dangers or acting like things aren't as important as they should be. For me, this show works best when it acknowledges how stupid the characters can be and pokes fun at them, like it did in this episode, instead of leaning into the melodrama. Willow's moping, however, was not part of what I enjoyed and very much fell into that melodrama category. Like you said, by the end of the episode, they kind of treated things like they had been resolved, and they acted like her moping over Oz was done with at the end of the episode, but again, there was no reason for that to happen. I'm hoping that subplot kind of has been resolved, but knowing this show, something along the same lines will probably happen before the opening credits of the next episode. And of course, as usual, there were absolutely no repercussions for Willow's actions, and I doubt that she's learned any kind of lesson about messing around with magic. Well, they did all get cookies. So a good repercussion. Yeah, that's like a half apology after almost getting everybody killed. What does she have to do? You want a pie? You want a cake? What do you want? <laughs> What's it going to take, Robert? I want something with a bit more substance, like character growth. Oh, they're or... going to say like carrot cake. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so join us for next episode, where Willow turns everyone into stone and then sends the earth hurtling into the sun. Speaking of turning people into stuff, have they completely given up on Amy? Because I was surprised that she is still around as a rat. Have they stopped trying to turn her back into a person? They have bigger things to worry about. Didn't you see how much Willow was moping? Yeah, that's true. And it didn't seem like it was that hard to turn her back because Willow messed up a spell and it worked to turn Amy back. But we've seen how much her spells don't work the way she intends them to. Yeah, so whenever she casts a spell, she should look at Amy and say, turn back into a human, and just see if it works, because she probably messed her spell up. Well, I'm surprised she hasn't somehow turned her into a giant rat that has gone around attacking people. Maybe she'll get turned from a rat into a car, and then Riley falls in love with her. <laughs> Got it. Season finale figured out. Next try, writers. I can't wait. <laughs>